Hello everyone, um, I thought that I would just very briefly um, show you where I'm working from, uh, which is quite a small space, it's a converted uh, garage. You can see um, I do have lots of, if I move my head which way, there's, there's various bits of artwork all around the walls. Um, and then to, <laughs> the camera's the wrong way around there. Um, you can see I've just got a small space where I see my clients because I'm a psychotherapist as well. Um, but I don't work full time, I only work part time. Um, so yeah, there's a space there and I try and tidy up before my um, counselling or psychotherapeutic uh, clients come. Uh, but otherwise I have got uh, all of this desk here, which is completely cluttered with art stuff. And if I just bring this camera briefly down, you can see the desk here that I'm working from. So, um, yeah, just a brief um, introduction to where I'm working from in case you thought I was working from some fantastic... Um, studio. I, I'm actually just making the best use that I can of a very small space um, that I have to quickly kind of tidy up a bit more um, when I have my um, counselling clients. So there we go. Um, anyways, on to um, today's video that I'm going to do with you and share with you a couple of new things that I've got and do a little bit of swatching as well. Okay, see you in a moment. Hello everyone. So today, um, I hope you enjoyed my, my little introduction. I just thought sometimes it's nice to put a face to um, the voice. But today I'm going to share with you my purchase that I got uh, yesterday. Um, and I got this from Amazon and I will be putting the link below. It's the Painter's Colour Diary. This is the 9 by 12 but you can, in fact, get uh, an 8 by 6 And they, on the UK Amazon site, they came as a pack of two, which is rather nice. Um, so I've, I've got the smaller ones coming because I thought that they might be good for if I'm trying to uh, keep a track of some good colour palettes, some little themes that I um, have found work really well, maybe um, a very uh, small selection of four or five colours that make up a really nice palette. So um, this has got £140 cold pressed paper, there's 10 removable sheets and it has um, glassine in between um, each one and it's by HG Art Concepts. Um, this bit just moves, actually just move my, or have a sip of my coffee. Mm. Um, so you can actually take this off because this is really the, the front cover and you can see there's your glassine sheet. I've already swatched out the Daniel Smith tubes that I've decided to keep. I'm having a big clear out. So um, out of all of the Daniel Smith tubes that I had, these are the ones that I've, I've decided, yes, I use them. The other ones um, I will be um, sorting out uh, what to do with. But um, that's my Daniel Smith tubes. I've already got this page ready for us to swatch today with my golden um, core watercolour tubes and um, what I've done with my core tubes is put them, just going to check that this is in, yeah, I've put them in this palette which is a Paul Rubens palette which is quite a big palette um, and it is really for um, tube paints and to squeeze them out in so what have we got? Four by six fours, 24. So we've got 24 slots. You have got um, a nice mixing 
area and then this removable tray that slots in so even more mixing area so um, I'm going to swatch these out for us in a moment my whole set of core paints um, but I also wanted to show you that I've put my Faber-Castell artist pens in here as well so I'm, I'm thinking that this will be a much better way rather than using a sketchbook which I do swatch things in but I also use my sketchbooks for just practicing playing around um, having a go at things so I'm not precious about my sketchbooks but it does mean that I've got quite a few sketchbooks and I have to hunt to find where I did the swatching for particular paints. The other thing that I think is quite nice about this, um, I've already done it, is that you can actually take the pages out. So, um, and then you can um, slot them back in again as well. So this one does actually go in here. So I'm just going to slot that one back in but it does mean that if you wanted to take just one sheet away with you because you've um, decided that you're you're going to use a particular color palette then you could just take that one sheet with you but I have a feeling that the the little a5 one might be a bit better well eight by six inch one might be better for that so um, I am going to do that swatching for you in a moment uh, before we do that though, um, I'm just going to share with you a new palette that I've bought and it's really because I did have some questions about the palette that I was using when I swatched out my Michael um, Kors, um, not Michael Kors, I've got Kors on the brain, uh, my Michael Harding paints, this one here um, and this one I bought from Irit Landgraf. Um, from her website and um, it's not available anymore this insert here is what you might find on one of the metal paint palettes um, that you can buy where you can either fit 28 um, whole pans or you can fit a lot more um, half pans I've just got a pen in a gold dot pen in the middle there so that bit does actually come out um, and you can fit your half pans full pans there and then you have got these slots for um, to squeeze tubes into so I, I absolutely love this palette but it's not available anymore so Jackson's have an on plein air sale at the moment and this was one of the items that I got from the on plein air sale this is by Magello and it's their watercolour palette and it does also have a clear this is clear not not white plastic but you've got a clear insert here so you've got this as a mixing tray and this as a mixing tray you've then got your slots to put your tube paints in and I just thought that I would try. These are half pans and a full pan there. So you just get those loose from somewhere like Jackson's. Um, and I just wanted to see, there's the bag of half pans. What happens if I push them in? At the moment I'm using blue tack. Um, but you could use sticky dots maybe because this is plastic. Um, could I add more paints in here and just use this for mixing and would it still shut? And lo and behold, it does. So I think this could be a good alternative to my beloved palette that I can't buy any more of. Um, so yes, um, I will be having a think about what I'm going to put in here as I keep sorting through my huge supply of watercolours and whittling them down to um, the ones that I really know I'm going to use. Um, I might decide which, which set of 
paints go in here. Um, so yes, maybe the Shinhan paints possibly. So just thought I would briefly share that with you as an idea on, um, you know, adapting a palette maybe to um, what might work for you. So let's now get on with the swatching. Make sure I'm in view. Get to the right page. And because it's a ring binder, you can turn it over quite nicely. Lovely. And then I'm going to go through these core paints. Which brush should I use? I think I'm going to use my, my go-to, which is my Van Gogh size 8. Need to get some water. Let's get my water jar ready and my cloth. One cloth. Okay, so we are now ready to swatch these out. Golden, by the way, and the core watercolor paints. I will just. Um, uh, this is the little leaflet that comes when you buy any of the the core paints. Um, it does actually say they're a deep, rich, beautiful colour. Um, they use an exclusive binder which gives um, colour greater intensity and clarity while retaining the best qualities of traditional watercolours. So um, they are renowned for being very bright, very vibrant, very clear. And a lot of the pigments are single pigments. So let's have a little look at what we've got then. We're starting off with Hansa Yellow Light, and the pigment is PY3. I like the fact that you've got this black line here, which helps you to see how transparent, semi-transparent or opaque the um, paint is. So there we have our Hansa Yellow Light. Uh, should we go down? Let's go down. Now, this is Benzimodazium. Anyway, um, something like that. What is it called? Benzimodazoion. I just call it Benzo Yellow. I mean, what a name. So let's go with that one next. And that is PY154. Then we have got Nicolazo Yellow, and this is a colour that is renowned for pushing other colours away. It's quite a unique colour. PY150, Nicolazo Yellow. Let's just water that down a bit more at the end. There we go. Then we're going for Naples Yellow. Now this is not a single pigment, this has got PBR24 which is a brown, PBK7 which is a black, PW4 which is a white and it's usually quite opaque. Yeah we can see that that one's a bit more opaque than the others. Then we've got Quinacridone Gold and um, I just put Quin Gold for short. So Quinacridone Gold. Quinacridone Gold is PO48, which is an orange, PY150, which is a yellow. Let's just see if we can water that down a bit more. See how yellow it goes. There we go. Right, what have we got next? We have got transparent pyro orange. We 
can see the ones that are very, you know, the Hansi yellow light is quite transparent. Actually, the Queen Gold isn't too bad. Oh, we've got a Queen Gold Deep coming up next. So let's do that one. Should have put Queen Gold and Queen Gold Deep together, shouldn't I? We can see it is a lot deeper than um, the other Queen Gold. So Queen Gold Deep is PO48, whereas Queen Gold was PO48 plus P150. Okay, moving on to Burnt Sienna. Burnt Sienna, where am I? There. Burnt Sienna is PBR7. BR meaning brown. Pigment Brown 7. Okay, there's our Burnt Sienna. Then we've got Transparent Brown Oxide. Uh, no, Transparent Brown it's just called here. Transparent Brown, oh, Transparent Brown Oxide, that's right. PR101. Followed by raw umber. There's our raw umber. There it is. Raw umber is PBR7. I would have to say that this is rather nice watercolour paper in this painter's diary. Moving on, we have got some green gold. Green gold is PY129. Pigment yellow 129. Yellow ochre. PY43. Then we have got Thalo Blue Green Shade. So it comes in green shade and red shade. So this is PB15 colon 3. Oh, you can see that's a Thalo. I always find, um, I know some people love Thalo Blue, Thalo Green. I struggle with them. They're, they're um, so bright. I think for me they're only any use for mixing really. Ultramarine is next. And that is PB29 which is the usual ultramarine. Then we've got indigo. As I said, most of them are single pigments, but indigo isn't. Indigo is PB15, PK7, and PV19. So it's got a violet in it. Mm. Oh, it is a lovely indigo though. Oh, I like that. Um, at the moment, I love Nicolazo Yellow. That's standing out for me. Transparent Brown, um, Indigo, Green Gold. They're looking good. Right, Cobalt Teal is next. And I do like Cobalt Teal usually. Cobalt Teal is one of my favourites in the Michael Harding. 
Mm, yep, yeah, that's a nice cobalt teal. That colour is PG50. Then we've got Payne's Grey. Payne's Grey and Indigo. Love those two colours. So this is a mixture of PB15, colon 13, PBK7 and PV19. Again, PV19. I should have to look that up. I wonder what that is. Oh, this is a nice, this is a nice Payne's Grey. It's got a real blue tinge to it. Then we have got Buff Titanium or Titan Buff. Same thing. So let's just grab some of that, which is PW6 colon 1. And it's usually pretty opaque. Yeah, you can see how that's cut, really covered that line up. The Payne's Grey has as well. Um, but I think it might just be that I've done that quite dark. What do we have next? Viridian PG18. I want to like Viridian because it is such a lovely colour, but I, I kind of struggle using it in my paintings. It ends up another one of those that is usually just for mixing. Although, saying that, this is a nice Viridian. Sometimes they can be very weak. PG18 for Viridian. Then we've got uh, Sap Green. Sap Green is a convenience colour, so it's a mix of PG36, PR101 and PY150. Now this might be one of my favourite sap greens. Look at that. What's next? Diazosine purple PY23. Where are you? There you are. Oh, love it, love it, love it. That's my kind of purple because it's more on the blue side. And I do prefer cooler colours. Look at those two together. Sap green and diazosine purple. Oh, I love those two together. And I like it with the cobalt teal as well. And the viridian. Oh, I might have to play with some colour mixes. Right, permanent alizarin is next. I used to use alizarin quite a lot. But I haven't used it for a while. Oh, I like that one. This is a nice bright permanent alizarin. Okay, that's PR177. Venetian Red. Let's have a look what you're like. This is PR101. Oh, okay. So, transparent brown oxide has got Venetian red in it. So is sap green. Uh huh. I knew I'd seen it somewhere else. There we go. Nearly there, we've got a couple left. We've got Pyrol Red, the light one. And that is PR255. Pyrols are usually quite transparent. Oh, that Venetian red has definitely 
granulated, so has the viridian. Indigo and Payne's grey have got a little bit going on, and so is Nicolazo yellow. Okay, our final one then is Quin Magenta or Quinacridone Magenta. Sorry, my shortcut there. Which is PR122. Okay. Let's just move that one out of the way. So there we have, I'm going to bring them up closer for you, just rinse my brush out. Let's bring that up closer. So here we go. I'm going to go down the page, I think. You can see the granulation there in the Nicolazo yellow and how opaque the Naples yellow is. There's our Quin Gold. Going back up again, we have got Transparent Pyro Orange, very transparent. Quin Gold Deep. I'm not sure if I like that as much as Quin Gold, but there we go. Burnt Sienna. There's that lovely transparent brown oxide. I like that. I like colours that sing. Raw Umber, very nice. Then we have got our indigo, cobalt teal, oh that gorgeous Payne's Grey, that might be my favourite Payne's Grey so far, buff titanium or titan buff, there is the most gorgeous viridian, mm. I've never seen a viridian that's got that much pigment and that much colour to it. Sap green, really versatile there because you can do it quite dark and then it moves into quite a yellowy, um, what we've got, PY150 in there, so there's our yellow pigment. This is that diazosine purple that I need to play with. We've got permanent alizarin crimson, Venetian red. And then on this side, we've got Pyrol Red Light and Quinacridone Magenta. So there we have all of the Golden Core colours that I have. Um, there are lots more. As I said, where's my um, colour chart? So there are lots more to choose from. And on their website... You can actually print off all the information about all of their watercolours and it gives you the pigments, it gives you the um, light fastness, um, the opacity, whether they're semi-transparent, transparent or opaque and whether they are staining or whether they are granulating. Oh, that's interesting. So is Nicolazo yellow granulating then? Oh, I didn't know that. Where are we? No, it doesn't say it's granulating here, but maybe it's just the colour mix there that I've done then. Where's Viridian? Yes, the Viridian is granulating. Semi-transparent and semi-staining. That is a gorgeous Viridian. Anyway, I will put the link to Core's website um, and this um, colour chart in case any of you are interested in that. Um, in the links I will also um, uh, put the link for Amazon for these, uh, what are they called, Paint, Painter's Diary, let's get it right, Painter's Colour Diary and also um, uh, anything else that I can think of really. Anyway, I do hope that you've enjoyed um, today's video and I will hopefully see you again next time. 
Thank you so much for watching. All right, bye-bye for now.